Hello and welcome into this video. I know that I've been making HDB content for a while, yet I have not got to share my own personal experience with you of how I found the HDB visa, seeing as I have been on this visa um, for a total of three years and I lived and worked in six different places on this visa. I have um, quite a bit of experience to that I can possibly share with you so I thought well why not make a video where I can share with you what my experience was um, starting with how I got this job offer and the process of getting my visa how long it took how it was when I first flew over to the States um, how my flights were paid for where I was living how I found work and got what I got to do in my free time and how I got to then extend that visa. So I thought, let's make this into um, a video. So here we are, I'm gonna be discussing all of those topics for you in a nice short and sweet manner so you can enjoy and get the gist of what it really is like to be on the H2B visa if you are sitting at home, if you are on the fence of if, some, if this is something you are even interested in or not to pursue and to gather more information on and if you do want to gather more information I will link below some other videos that you can watch to get more actual information on how you can go about joining this um, visa opportunity as well so let's get into it Have a sip of my juice hmm. okay so my um, HTB journey all started in 2018 I was living in Ireland um, where I am from and I just got back from traveling Europe for a couple of months with my best friend at the time. We um, had such a fun time traveling around Europe. We were um, 20, yeah we were 20 at the time so um, we were just living what felt like our best lives. We were living and working in Greece and then we went to Spain and we went to many different places. We had such a fun time. Uh, yeah, when we were traveling Europe, we could not get, we found it quite difficult to get a job, even though we did try and even though we were um, actually uh, trying to work in Greece and a job opportunity, it just more so fell through or wasn't a good fit for us. So we ended up coming back to Ireland with basically no money. We had um, a couple of euro in our bank account. So we wanted to brainstorm on how we could travel more long term and while actually getting paid, which um, led us to think of what we want to do next. And Australia was on the list of a place where we could go to and we could live and work there and um, get a job there. But it just so happened that um, I would need some money to get there. So I think at the time you needed about 5,000 euro to enter into um, Australia. So I thought, well, I'll live and work at home for a couple of months to earn 5,000 to be able to go to Australia. Um, so that was the plan. Um, so I was, before um, I went traveling Europe, I was working as a personal trainer um, and a fitness coach. Um, teaching many different classes yet I didn't want to go back into that because I was only going to stay in Dublin or in Ireland for a couple of months to earn enough money to travel again so I didn't want to really commit myself to um, more of what it felt like a long-term job so I thought well hospitality will be the best thing for me to be able to go into and to possibly earn more money because and um, with the hours maybe I could work two jobs to earn even more money quicker so that's when I started to research now, when I was researching that, it just so happened that there was a recruitment agency for this H2B visa that was in Dublin at the time, seeking to hire people to go over to Florida. So this was around summertime. Um, I think it was close to August when I received a call um, and the um, recruitment company said that they had some job opportunities in Florida and they were interested to interview me and the jobs would be in hospitality so i thought oh my gosh great well i get to earn money and to be in another country which was what they said a temporary contract for um seven or eight months i believe it was so that sounded fun and exciting for me so i actually went for the interview and went through that process and actually um got got hired i got the job so once i got hired there was some paperwork for me to fill out i had to apply for my ESTA visa and then I had an, an embassy appointment at um you know to get my to get my HDB visa 
and then I had to get the HCB visa into my passport. I also had to go for um, a, a guard clearance, background check, and did I have a medical? I, I can't remember too much if I had a medical. I think I, I possibly may have um, had a medical. That's one part I do forget. Um, and then I, my job started in October, so they flew me over in October. My flights were all fully paid for because on this H2B visa, it is the responsibility of the employer, so the person who is employing you, to provide you with your flights and to pay for them, pay for your transport um, to the job. So um, my flights were paid for, which I thought was unbelievable. I remember um, even thinking, was this a scam at first? Was this too good to be true? I remember my family was thinking the same thing. So we really were looking into everything and checking the fine print um, because previous to that, I had been offered a job in Europe as a holiday rep. And when I read the fine print of that, it really did not sound good because you had to almost like pay to get out of that contract. So read through this one, my family read through it and it all sounded legit. So off I went, very short notice. Um, so while I was in Ireland that time, I um, went back to work in a previous job I was working in, in city sightseeing, and um, I just worked there for a couple of months to earn enough money to have some spending money, because it is recommended that on this visa that you do come over with some spending money, as you won't be getting paid for um, a couple of weeks, because you may have to, let's say you get paid every two weeks, you may have to work a back week, which means it may even be a month before you get paid, so it's obviously good to have enough money to be able to fund yourself, to buy foods, to um, go shopping, or to do activities, whatever you want to do in that month before you get paid. So I had enough money to go over. And then when I took the flight over um, to the States, I'd already um, met some familiar faces because we had um, we had a day together where I got to um, uh, meet some of the other um, people who will be working as HGV, as as employees on the HGV visa. And I also bumped into some of them again when I was at my um, visa embassy appointment. So I knew some familiar faces already in the airport and we all met in the airport with um, the person who recruited us was also there. So it was really nice to have like familiar face and feel while we got to say goodbye to our families or whoever we traveled to the airport with and off we went with our big suitcase um, to live and work for a period of eight months over in Florida, which is where my job was. So my job was in um, Boca Raton in Florida, and I was living close by, um, I think 20 minutes away from where my job was. And um, anyway, so once I arrived over on the plane, um, we got to our accommodation, which was also provided for by our job. Um, yet the money for our rent did come out of our paychecks once we did start working. Um, however, it was inexpensive and the reason for that is because we were living in an apartment with six people so it was two people per room and we had single beds so two single beds per room and we had six people per apartment in the season that I was working on. Um, so when we got there, we all got housed, we all got assigned to our rooms, we got to meet our roommates and then we went on a shop to get some groceries or to get some alcohol or to get whatever we wanted to do to celebrate um, being there and meeting, trying to get to know our new, um, not only in like employees or co-workers, but also get to know who were going to be our new roommates and our new friends for the season. So we all got to know each other and we all actually went on a night out together, which was a lot of fun. And then um, I think it was a, we had a couple of days to settle in and then we had our um, two weeks induction. So we got introduced to um, the, the, the club that we would be working for. We got training, um, we got our uniforms, they helped us set up our bank accounts and anything else that we basically had to do, we were assisted through that process. So it was all very easy and very smooth. Um, and then we did start working. So I actually was working as a fitness attendant, which it's, there's not many jobs as fitness attendants. Most of the jobs seem to be as servers or cook or hostess, but I was lucky to find a job in a fitness center. And um, as I was already previously working in the gyms, um, I thought it was, you know, a great step for me. 
So I really enjoyed working and living in that season in Florida because we um, we did work a lot. Um, I was working 40 hours a week, which was probably at the lower end of what people were working because I was in the fitness center, had more assigned hours, yet the people who were working in the hospitality, more like in the in the serving, I know they worked a lot more hours than me because they were required to come in earlier for a shift and then work through, let's say, breakfast, lunch or dinner, whatever, whatever they were assigned to that shift. Um, so if they had like an early shift or a late shift or maybe they would have to work through the whole day so, so they would or if there's events on so they usually got a lot more hours than me um, so you do work a lot that's what I experienced anyway um, but you do get at least one day off a week which happens to fall um, in a lot of my experience on a Monday because um, oftentimes hospitality food places close down on a Monday and um, so people get to enjoy their day off, which is really great. So on that day, we would usually hang out with our coworkers, with our new friends, and we would do things like go to the beach or go on a day trip to um, Miami, or we'd hang out in West Palm or Delray or all these fun places. And we would um, get to go and do some activities and adventure and explore together on our days off and hang out. And then on the days we were working, oftentimes we had a couple of hours off in the morning before work where I would um, go for a smoothie with my friend or hang out at the pool um, and then after work we could uh, we could go out together, we could hang out, it was up to us as well. So you do have some time to hang out but you are also working a lot. And then I was lucky to have a couple of days off in a row throughout that season um, where I requested to have a couple of days off and I got to go to New York um, with my best friend who was my roommate at the time as well and we had a lot of fun in doing that. So you know, I got to really have a lot of fun on that season. So um, towards the end of that season, I found out that it was an op there was an opportunity to actually um, be able to extend that visa, which was, you know, the contract was gonna end in May. So I found out there was an opportunity that I could actually extend that visa and go to another place and um, live and work there, like similar to what I was doing and that um, that employer would continue to uh, sponsor me to live and work there on the H2B visa still. So um, I actually went for a couple of job interviews and I got offered a job next in um, Flagstaff, Arizona, which was a lot of fun. So I went there with a couple of people who I'd already lived and worked with and um, that was a cool small like, mountain town that um, there was a college close by. So um, there was many like um, like college bars or things to do around the area um, and there was hiking so that was a lot of fun and um, smaller club than the one that I was working in in Florida accommodation was pretty similar there and it was like a nice temperature again because that was the high season there so I continued on after working there to go to um, extend my visa for a total of four more times moving to another place in Arizona and then to Michigan and then um, back to Florida so overall it was a lot of fun um, and that is basically a summary of my experience so um, I hope that gives you a little bit more of a gist or a feel of what it actually is like to be on the HCB visa and to live and work so yeah, if you have any more questions or are curious about any more of my experience, do feel free to leave your question in the comment section below. And if I get asked a lot of the same um, question, then maybe I can possibly make a future video on that. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you did like this information and you are curious to hear more. And look down in the description box below for other videos that will describe how you can actually go about getting on this visa yourself. So see you in the next one.